Welcome to our class. This is going to start off with Elle. She is from the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, and I will allow her to introduce herself. Take it away, Elle. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for letting me join you today. Um, you know, as it was stated, my name is Elle Benick. I'm from the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. I have been working here for five years now. Um, I work in our education department, which is which is housed in our Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, but I've had worn many hats in my time here. Um, I've worked closely with the content in our museum, uh, creating experiences in there from more of an exhibit standpoint. I've written curriculum aligned to state standards, both here in Ohio and Kentucky. Um, I have created student programs and experiences, and I really enjoy what I do and bringing personal finance and career readiness to students. So that's really what today's chat is going to be focused on. Um, I do have a couple things to share with you. So if I'm able to share my screen, that would be great. So I just have a quick couple, like six trivia questions to ask ask you guys. Um, they will be true or false questions. So I'm just going to ask if you can access the chat, if you can put a T or F in the chat for true or false as I ask these questions. So my first question is, there have been two central banks in the United States history. Do you think that is true or false? There have been two central banks in United States history. Do you think there's been more, there's been less? I see two true. I see a couple true, a couple false. We're pretty much split between the true and the false right now. And the answer would actually be, I think false has taken it. The answer would actually be false. It is false. I don't know if it's false for the reason everyone knows, but it, there have actually been three central banking systems here in the United States. The Federal Reserve System, which the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland is a part of, was is actually the third central banking system here. There has been the first bank of the United States and the second bank of the United States, which were the two first central banks here. The Federal Reserve Act was signed in 1907. True or false? You can put a T or F in the chat. The Federal Reserve Act was signed in 1907. I see a false, false, false. I see a true, mostly false. I would say the false have it, and that would be correct. The, it is false. It was signed in 1913 by President Woodrow Wilson. The bank panic of 1907 took place in 1907, and that truly is, I would say, the catalyst that sort of brought back up this discussion of needing a central banking system or a solution to the bank panics that had been ha happening and marring that time period. And that solution was the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. So there are 12 districts that make up the Federal Reserve system. It is a, do you think that is true or false? Are there 12 districts? Are there more, less, See true, 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 true. True, true, true. I would <laughs> we I am not pulling anything over you guys today. I see one false. The answer is actually true. There are 12 district banks in the Federal Reserve System. So the Federal Reserve System is comprised of the 12 district banks and the Board of Governors, which is in Washington, DC. So my last question of our fun little Mythbusters trivia section is there, are there three states covered by the Federal Reserve's fourth district? So the Federal Reserve's fourth district is the Cleveland Fed's fourth district. How many states do you think are in that district? Do you think it's three or do you think it's more or less than that? So true or false? There are only three states that are covered by the Federal Reserve's fourth district. I'm seeing lots of crews, one false, another false, another false, a true. Okay, I like it. So it's actually false. There are four states 
covered by the Federal Reserve's fourth district. Um, it's a little surprising to people because it's all of Ohio, Western PA, Eastern Kentucky, and then the PAM handle, so six counties in West Virginia. So sometimes people can kind of forget West Virginia is in there. Um, that's just a little bit of information of who I am, where I work, what is the Federal Reserve System, so you can get to know us a little bit better as we talk about why the Federal Reserve is involved in financial literacy and career readiness. And the reason why is because of, you know, what's been charged to banks through Dodd-Frank. Um, to work within communities to improve financial literacy education and prepare young communities for career readiness. And so that's where we find our work coming from. So we do have our education team, a few resources that you can access. I'll be sharing throughout the chat, but one really important blanket statement I want to make is that everything I'm going to be sharing today is free. So we we have our online games, if you want to go ahead and take a look at those. These are games that can be utilized both during classroom lessons or could be utilized to be their own lesson plan. So for example, we have Barter Island, which is great for our elementary students. It's all about bartering and why it's important to have a, or what benefit having a uniformed currency can give a society outside of just bartering for things you need or want. We have Road to the Fed, which is going to teach about the first, second, and Federal Reserve system. So it's going to teach about all the central banking history here in the United States. We have Save and Spend Challenge, which is a game where students can take on a character, build a budget for that character, pick a career, pick a savings goal, and see how those choices can affect financial outcomes when they pick those budgets see if they're able to reach that savings goal. It's a really great, fun, fast-paced game. I utilize Save and Spend. Welcome to State Volleyball Rules Meeting. Cool. I utilize that a lot during um, lesson plans or like doing an activity with the class. Um, Great Minds Think is a workbook that the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland off offers. I typically say that this is like your one-stop shop financial literacy workbook, but we actually have created it as a online game. So it can be accessed through a website or it can be downloaded from that website as a icon that students can put directly on their Chromebook. And it's gonna walk them through different sections such as choices, earning, spending, budgeting, and have reading, vocab, and hands-on activities for students to complete in that. So a really great way to bring financial literacy into the classroom. Great minds think I would definitely say is like your middle school as well as save and spend challenge. That would be more middle school. Road to the feds a little bit more high school. But again, you utilize the resources that you think work best for your classroom. I have seen so many teachers be like, nope, great minds think is great for my high school class. It, it's, it's what It works for us. We like this. I want to utilize it. And that's awesome. Great minds think as well as if you other resources are available in digital booklets. So we have a booklet called Why Cleveland that talks about how Cleveland was even chosen as a district bank location within the fourth district, thinking of it as, a, as the fourth district's headquarters. We have Follow the Yellow Brick Road, which brings together your, more of your ELA English topics, um, talks a lot about the allegory of the Wizard of Oz when it was talking about if money should be backed by gold. And it talks about monetary policy, deflation, populism. So it's really um, interdisciplinary between English, talking about allegories, also bringing in some of the economics concepts as well. Again, I would say that's more for your high school level. And then you can access Great Minds Think not only as an online game, but also as a PDF that can be downloaded. And that game is available both in, and the PDF is available both in English ooh, and in Spanish. I'm the only one in here and the lights turned off. <laughs> I'm not moving around enough, apparently. Okay, so keep moving through some of the resources that are offered. We also have lesson plans. So these, many of these were written by me or my colleagues. They are all aligned to state standards here in Ohio. And as I said, Kentucky, not only are they aligned to state standards for social studies or any other subject, core subject that they might fit with, they're also aligned to the financial literacy standards that are set to be reached in the state of Ohio. So we have some resources on central banking. Um, what does it mean to have a central bank? What is a central bank? It looks at it from the point of view of other countries as well. So not just the United States central bank. 
We also have Jobs in My Town, which is for elementary, and it's focused on recognizing careers within a community. We have the Career Clusters, which is more middle school, and that is focused on students looking at the 16 career clusters that have been laid out and looking at different career paths within those clusters and how the skills of those different careers within those clusters might actually relate to their own skills. So it brings in some Venn diagram as well. And then Great Minds Think, we have written lesson plans for you to follow that exactly in your classroom and giving you differentiations and extensions so you can you know, fully integrate Great Minds Think into your classroom if you'd like. Um, all of these resources were created to be streamlined and easy for you to bring into the classroom. We did not want to create anything that was almost additive for the classroom to have. So these are all things that hopefully with the standards that you have to hit will be easy to bring into your classroom. I do want to make a quick stop at activities as well. These are going to be more things that you could probably utilize for extensions or class free time. There's coloring pages, logic puzzles, um, a vocabulary bingo game on Finlit vocabulary, you know, just some fun quick stops. I also do have a list of videos that you could bring into the classroom, which aren't accessible on our website. They are, but they're more hidden than going to one place. So I'm not gonna have Rebecca drive us there, um, but I will share with Rebecca, uh, hyperlinked slides from today's presentation that I was going to share that you guys will be able to access later. A few videos that we have are like Panic of 1907, which goes through the Panic of 1907. There's one at Alexander Hamilton and the first central bank and the foundation of the United States financial system. We have Inflation 101 videos, which are really great. I use for middle school and up. They're quick two minute bites. I'm like, why, what is inflation? Why should we care and what does the Fed do with inflation? Um, it's definitely a topic students have been hearing about as adults in their life have been talking about it. And I think these are great small bites for students to really understand at a base level, what is inflation? How does this impact our economy? There's also two videos that take them into this Fed. Um, so there's Welcome to the Fed, and then I'll take them through the historic main lobby and tell them a little bit about it and what the Federal Reserve does. And then there's Inside Our Cash Processing. So that'll take them straight into side cash processing and show them what the cash processing system looks like so they can really learn about the life cycle of money. And I think what's interesting for me to share with students is every single dollar bill they'll ever see through their life will go through the cash processing system they'll see in that video. Okay. So a few other things I want to share is we all are familiar with Senate Bill 1 and the fact that financial literacy is now stated to be an 18 week long course for the classroom that students have to take before graduation. So I'm actually sending us a new link to a resource called Econ Lowdown, knowing that and thinking about the best way that we can support teachers within here in Ohio. Um, one of my colleagues took the summer to create a completely free to use um, standard aligned to the Ohio financial literacy model curriculum, 18 week long curriculum guide for teachers to use inside their classroom. So you could pull up this curriculum guide and it's going to give you what lesson plans or activities you can do that day in the class that is aligned to the model curriculum that Ohio has laid out. Um, it's also going to give you extensions and differentiations throughout it. It's extremely flexible to meet the need, your needs and your students' needs. It sounds like a few of you are very familiar with teaching financial literacy. So you probably have resources that you already enjoy using. Well, if you're looking for a homework assignment or you're like, I really would like to add some new life to this section or this topic or you know, this resource I used to use for this topic is no longer available, um, you can also cherry pick from this guide as well to grab what you like and what you might want to use. There are, embed there are embedded assessments throughout the whole 18 week long curriculum that are accessible via Econ Lowdown. So you can see here in Econ Lowdown, there are different resources re uh, listed. Actually, Rebecca, if you in this search resources put W, W is for wages. And go to mm, that first one, it's your paycheck. W is for wages, W4 and W2. 
So this is a great example of one of the resources on there. Um, if you take a look at it, I'm trying to see where you can get it to be the bigger version. Can you copy the URL and open that URL for me? Thank you. So this is just an example of one out of many of the resources. Oh, it took you to the same place. Okay, I guess you can scroll down. And in. Um, sorry, guys. So if you proceed to the next page, you'll see this is what students can go through. It'll take them through like, why do people work? They'll be able to like, it has embedded answers that they can do throughout that they'll fill out. Like for example, in this one, there's a W2 form that they'll have to fill out actually fill it out and kind of be walked through how to fill out that W-2 form, um, so on and so forth. So many of the resources and activities that are listed in that guide look like this. Um, so the way that's broken down is there are three weeks dedicated to each of the six topic strands, and then we break it down by day and link the resources and the expectations for learning are listed underneath that resource that tell you how they're reaching those expectations expectations for learning and what content statements those expectation, expectations for learning connect to. Um, so it's really broken down. Like I said, it not only gives you resources to do for that day, but also gives you extension activities. Um, Econ Lowdown, which is a platform we're looking at right now, is a, you can choose to utilize it the way it's thought to be utilized, which is a, you know, a management panel where students are able to directly go in and fill out that activity like you saw right there. Um, but it's also very Google friendly. So students can log in with their own Google login. So if you use Google Classroom and you want to sync this with your Google Classroom, students can use their Google login to then log into this resource and directly go in there and do that. And you'll be able to see what students completed, what they didn't complete, assign them work. Um, it's really, you know, a content management system that some teachers really enjoy. You can also choose just to access the resources and not set your classroom up in there as well. Um, like I said, this is a resource that was created to help teachers implement that 18 week long curriculum that they need to implement. I hear from teachers a lot that there's so many resources out there. How do I go through and find them all? And we really wanted to make sure that we did the digging for you so you didn't have to spend the time doing the digging um, because you got to bring it into the classroom. So that's what this is set up for. It is just right now set up for high school. Our plan and our hope and our dream is to work it all the way back to grade K. So hopefully eventually we will have middle school and elementary. That's not to say, you know, middle school, especially if you want to take a look through this, you find things that are useful that you can't implement it as well. Okay, last thing I want to talk about real quick here. I know I've been throwing a ton of resources at you, and if that's not enough, I have another repository for you. So there are 12 Federal Reserve System, or 12 Federal Reserve Districts within the Federal Reserve System. So the we all have one repository called federalreserveeducation.org and that is where you can go and find resources for every national content standard, every grade, even like adults. There are videos, podcasts, um, reading worksheets, lesson plans, storybooks, workbooks, all listed on here. So just for giggles, in the search resources, Rebecca, would you type in, type in earning for me. So now it'll bring up every resource they have for earning and you can look across the top. If you go to like audience, across that top panel, you could break it down by general public, students, teachers. So is this, do you want a resource you can immediately bring to the students or is this a resource you might need just for yourself? And you can apply those filters. You could even go one step farther and go to grades. So maybe now you've said students, but now you know you really want K through fourth, for example. And you can apply the filters there. And you can keep going down, keep going down. It could be a resource type. You might say, you could do topics. You could do types saying like, hey, I want a publication, I want a lesson plan, I want a video, I want an activity. Um, sometimes there'll be more for certain topics than others, uh, but it's really, you know, 
navigable. And I like that there's these filters because for high school alone, there are over 800 activities listed on this website. Um, again, this website is full of only free activities. Everything I've sent you today and have shared with you today is free to access for the classroom. Um, there's not a cost behind any of it. And I'm also realizing I did not send econ lowdown to everyone. So I need to send those links around again. So I'm gonna share those again, but I'm here for questions if you have them. Again, I apologize for some of the technical difficulty I experienced, it was very new to me. I might blame that my computer decided to update today, but I'm here to ask any questions. We can look farther at any of the resources I talked about. Um, I hope you found something that you feel will be useful for your classroom or something that you might want to look into a little bit farther. I am reachable. I'll put my email in the chat box here and you can always just reach out to me directly. And like I said, I apologize that I did not have my slides today, but I am going to share those with Rebecca so she can share those directly with you. Um, but also feel free to reach out to just me if you have any questions, but I'll pause now for questions. I actually have a question and it's back to the group. Have any of you used these resources that Elle is mentioning? I'd love to know if some of you already knew about this or if this is new to you. These are all new to me. Oh, great news then, Anne. My chat. Yeah, we see somebody has used a few videos on money. Great, thank you. So I see a question, do we have programs where you come out to the schools? Yes, we do. Um, I will also say that we do also offer field trips at the museum. There is some changes going on with our um, structure at the museum, so I can't completely state what field trips will look like coming here for the upcoming school year, which is why typically I would have a slide about it <laughs> in my presentation, um, and you actually probably won't even find it on our website right now but there should be field trips that will be offered next school year so you could both come out to this the museum here which I know for some might be a drive um, we have seen groups from all over drive out here to come here so that's the money museum and throughout that students will explore you know what makes money money what is the central banking system what is the money life cycle counterfeits protection on money um, a little bit on personal finance and budgeting. A lot of topics are explored here. I would say typically your average field trip here will probably take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. But we do have programs where we can come up to the schools and I can do different activities with the students. So save and spend challenge. If I come out to the cl classroom and do it, looks a little bit different than just doing it via the game that I shared with you guys today. Um, another popular activity for me to come out and do is our budget puzzle, um, inflation, earnings. I have even for like our elementary kiddos, I have storybook hours that are connected with um, different financial literacy lessons. One popular one for my elementary students is on, um, it's our activity on like what makes money money. So it's the different characteristics of money. And I think that's always interesting for students to learn is that there has been a lot of bargaining because there are actual characteristics of money that can make something like a seashell usable as money and how that connects to the money we use today and why we've chosen to move to the dollar. And we'll go into that. Um, a popular one for our high school is credit and understanding your credit score and understanding credit cards and all of that. Um, it's a very you know popular topic. So yeah, there are lots of different um, topics we can hit when we come out to the classroom. And I do have colleagues that we make sure we cover the whole fourth district. So I primarily sor serve Northeastern Ohio. I have a colleague who does Central and Dayton area. And then I have a colleague who does Cincinnati, Kentucky and a colleague who does Pittsburgh. So I kind of take like the whole upper strip of Ohio. When I say Northeastern, I'm really talking far, like all the way out. But between all of us, we try to make sure that everywhere is covered. Um, so like even from here to Columbus, we would probably see what bandwidth we have, either me or my colleague, Sam, might be able to come out to a classroom. Oh my goodness, Elle, you have just blown us away. <laughs> so 
Thank you. This is amazing. I will get all those links put into our video description and emailed, as well as your slides that you'll follow up. I'll get that to everybody through email. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry for the technical difficulties day, today, guys. That is okay. <laughs> it happens. And as I have a leaf blower in outside my window, he's actually, I looked, he's trimming a bush. So I apologize for any background noise I have. Uh, but without further ado, I would love to introduce to all of you our next presenter, and this is Megan. Megan, say a little bit about yourself. Hello, and good morning. Good morning. Thank morning. you so much um, for having me. I am excited to share some more resources for you all. Um, I am here from Everfag today, um, so I'm going to give you a, a overview about what you can expect from Everfi courses, give you a brief look into some courses, and then share how to get set up. So my name is Megan Foreman. Um, I am also based in the Cleveland area. Um, I'm a former educator. I've now, this is my second year now out of the classroom. I worked um, as a middle school English teacher for eight years. Um, so I always feel, still kind of feel the excitement in the air around this time. I'm excited for you all to to get started with the school year soon. Um, have my contact information on here, which I will also share in the chat towards the end. Um, and I can support all of you in getting started on Everfi um, or answering any questions after I share some information today. So um, I don't know how to make this go away. Hopefully it will in a second. Um, so um, at, at Everfi, we are your partners in whole child learning. So we have a, several financial literacy courses, which I'll share with you, but we also have courses um, all about other real world skills. So anything from how to calm down when you're feeling stressed to vaping and alcohol prevention um, to financial literacy courses. Um, our courses are digitally based. They are completely planned for you and really designed for students to move through independently. Um, all of our courses have assessments and reporting, so students will take a pre-test and a post-test, and then that will show up in a grade book available to you for you to use those, those scores as they work for you. And then we have local support, so um, I am your local support person. I can help you set up classes. We can also do um, student launches, either virtually or we can come in person to kind of launch your students on the courses. Our resources are also free. I love to see other free resources that Elle shared with you. We know how you know limited funding is, so it is really wonderful um, to be able to provide even more free resources for you guys to, to have access to. Um, our resources are free because we have partnerships with um, sponsors. So anyone from the NFL to Math Mutual to Zelle, um, a lot of big sponsors who allow these programs to be free. Um, so we offer a lot along with the digital courses, um, but really want to call out right here that we have a lot of student scholarship opportunities as well. Um, and I specifically want to call that out for you all because um, most of those scholarships are tied to our financial literacy courses. So pretty simple for students to apply for. Um, once you are in kind of our email loop, we will contact you a lot about those scholarships. Um, so for many of the courses, students just complete a few lessons and have to um, complete a short application and they, they will be eligible for, for some um, funds for a 529 account. I want to quickly share this with you. This is a graphic that shows um, most of our courses, even beyond the financial literacy world. I will share this with you after. I do not expect for you to be able to absorb this all, but want to call this out because we have courses well beyond financial literacy. We have STEM and career readiness, um, social, emotional health, uh, physical health, early literacy, and history courses as well. All right. Here's a quick overview of our middle school financial education. We also, our vault is actually our, our elementary course as well. Um, and then at the middle school level, we have Future Smart, where students become the mayor of their own town and help different characters through a variety of situations um, that will teach them about finances and career readiness. Um, and then we have Save Up, teaching about personal savings, smart economics, giving students an understanding of economics. 
And then Venture is our entrepreneurial course where students build their own food truck um, and learn all about entrepreneurship through that. The high school level, we have even more than what I'm showing you here. Um, our Ever5 Financial Literacy course is our original course. It's had a lot of evolution since it first came out, but that's going to cover the basics of finances. And I put basics kind of in air quotes there because it dives into the topics really deeply, but it's going to cover, um, you know, applying for a credit card, credit, um, consumer, like comparing consumer prices and um, financing higher education and many other areas from there. We also have courses that are going to dive into some of those topics even deeper. So let's say students um, got an introduction to credit in this Ever5 Financial Literacy course. We also have a course that focus, focuses primarily on credit for students to dive into that topic even more. I am well aware, by the way, that I'm moving quickly. I will share all of this information with Rebecca to share out with you all. And then um, again, share my contact information to answer additional questions. Um, some of our newer courses, I especially like to share these if you've if you've known of Everfy before, but maybe you're not aware of some of our newer courses. We have a crypto course, an accounting careers course um, that really shows students the different careers that are available to them in the accounting world, sustainable investing, and then minding your money. Um, I love this one because it really explores the relationship between money and mental health, and then also money and relationships. So like if a friend comes up to you and asks for $100, how do you navigate that situation? It can be a little bit complex for a teenager to know what to do. So really um, thinking about things like that. All right, so I'm gonna share a little bit more about what to expect with our courses and then show you um, one of them a little bit more. I also do see chat. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure if that was directed toward me. Okay, all right, so um, our Ever5 Financial Literacy course, um, really all of the high school courses that I'll share with you are, you can use for grades nine through 12. You could, I also see middle school teachers using these as well. Um, I would primarily say at the middle school level, we have those middle school courses available, but just like with the resources Elle shared, if you take a look at them and you think they'll work for your middle schoolers or your high schoolers, that is totally your discretion. Um, in this course, it is made up of seven lessons, about 20 to 30 minutes each. And one thing I want to emphasize is you do not have to use this course start to finish. You can use just one of the lessons if you would like. Like, let's say you only want to focus on having uh, on managing credit and debt. So you have your students just complete that lesson, even as an introduction to that, that unit that you're about to teach. Um, the lessons also start and stop. So if you only have 10 minutes for students to explore, they can spend 10 minutes, it will pause their progress and they can pick right back up on that when they have some more time. Um, you can absolutely go start to finish, have students start with lesson one and go all the way through till the end. Um, but you can certainly use these as they work for you. All right. Now, all of our courses are going to have their own look and feel, but in general, they all follow a similar structure. So they'll start with a little bit of an introduction, activating background knowledge. Sometimes they will have a, like a, a, a survey for students to kind of uh, think about things like, what kind of money manager are you? Then they have their pre-assessment. So asking them some questions, what do you already know? That will actually look very similar to their post-assessment. Then they'll go through um, some new learning, which I'll show you a little bit in a second about what that looks like. And then they'll have an activity to kind of tie that all together before their post-assessment. All right, so I'm gonna come out of here for a second. And I'm just gonna quickly show you just a few screen grabs from our Upper Five Financial Literacy course um, for you to get a sense of what students will learn and what that will look like. And you will hear, you will potentially hear some audio if it works. Um, but I'm probably just going to skip through it a little bit. Can you hear that audio? No audio, uh, Megan. But okay. Maybe you just didn't check the box uh, when you did your screen share. Got it. Okay. Well, then that's not a big deal. I do want to call out that there is audio. So right as I clicked that screen, this is all being read aloud through a voice that sounds like it would be a, a teenage boy. Um, 
So I love that feature because it just makes it so much uh, more accessible for students. Um, so I've been in classrooms, just as a heads up, where students don't put in headphones or don't want to. And as the teacher, I would potentially just say, you're putting in headphones, like don't even give them the option, really. I just think, uh, you know, especially these days where students are so on their technology all the time, um, listening and reading, I just think is a game changer here. So highly recommend that. Um, but this is Martin. He just got a job as a lifeguard and now he needs to know what to do with this money that he's getting. So um, Martin's going to have a few options that he the students will interact with. So is he going to find a financial financial institu institution, put it under his mattress, or um, do some research and then find a financial financial institution? So we'll click that one. If you click a different answer, it will redirect you. And then Martin's going to start reviewing some financial institutions. So of course, students will learn about them as well. So we have a brick and mortar bank. So I know, again, that was quick, um, but you learn a little bit about each option as you go through. So after you click through, then we, Martin gets the option of which one is he going to go to? We'll choose brick and mortar. And then what I love about this page, sorry, I can still hear the audio. Um, so this is as if Martin has gone into a brick and mortar bank, and we're going to be able to click on each of these people to find out what their role is, what do they do. And this page, along with many of the other um, pages uh, or, and many of the other uh, lessons that students will go through, just really builds their muscle memory or takes them through an experience that they might not be used to. Um, so walking into a brick and mortar bank for the first time and not knowing what to do can be pretty overwhelming for a teenager. Um, so we'll get to, uh, get to know who each of these, these people are, what do they do, and then um, figure out the, the next steps from here. So I'm going to click back to the presentation and just share a couple more things that you can expect. So Martin will meet with the representative and um, kind of figure out what he needs to do to apply for a card to open up that bank account. What um, forms does he need? What forms of ID does he need? Um, he will also go through and go through like a W-4 statement. What do I fill out in each of these places? What does this mean? It's something that I certainly wish that when I was filling out one of these for the first time I had access to, like you could certainly introduce students to this. And then as maybe they are going through this experience, they can pull EverFi back up and go through this again um, to, to refresh their memories. Um, even looking through a pay stub, something that I have found still confusing up into you know, several jobs in, in my life. Um, so figuring out what each of these things means, um, what are the deductions? Students will even go through experiences where they have to like calculate those things and what that's doing to their paycheck. And then even into insurance. So figuring out what insurance you need, how that's going to um, change your paycheck, how, how much you're gonna put into savings versus retirement. And then what happens when you are in a situation like you're playing baseball and you get hit in the mouth mouth with a ball? Um, what do you do to pay for that? Do you use your insurance? Do you use your savings account? What's that going to do? So this will really change um, change the calculations here as students go through this experience. Okay, so I know that was quick. Um, one thing I want to call out for you when you get onto the EverFi website. Um, for each course that you see, and you'll have availability, you'll have access to all of them. There is a button, details. When you click on the details button, you can, if you can see it up here, I don't know if this is showing for you or just blocking my screen. Um, there is a preview course button. So again, details, preview course. Preview course allows you to see what I was just showing you. So it will allow you to see what students will experience in any course that you would like to see. Um, also in that details section, we also do have some additional offline lesson plans. So um, with those, not only do you have the offline lesson plans, so um, a lesson plan fully created for you that you can use to extend that learning that students have just gone through, 
We also do have assessment keys. So I mentioned that there are assessments built into each lesson. You don't have to go through and figure out the right answers. We have those keys available to you. So again, want to repeat details and then preview course. Again, I mentioned those um, offline resources. We have um, curriculum guides that include lesson descriptions and learning objectives. Um, we also have those additional offline lesson plans. This is for a different course than what I showed you. Um, but then we also have partnerships with Canva and Pear Deck. So some additional resources you can use to build out the lessons on the back end or to introduce the topics to students. A few ideas for implementation. So our courses are not really designed to be a full curriculum. I will share with you in just a second um, a curriculum guide we have to fulfill the standards within that um, Senate Bill 1. Um, but a few different ways to use the resources. As I mentioned, you can use a course start to finish, but you can also just take 10 minutes, 20 minutes to um, to put those, those courses into students' hands. As I mentioned, they are designed for students to work through independently. Um, so, sorry, just, I see a few questions. I will um, come back to those in one second. Um, so it's as simple as once you've created an account, once you've had your students create an account, they can just press start. So you can use it as a unit intro or review. Uh, maybe after you've gone through a particular unit, you can um, use it to refresh students' memory, to prepare for a test, to provide some extra support. You can use it as um, station work or one activity I love seeing that teachers do a lot of the time is they will assign students um, uh, each a different lesson within a course and then the students become the expert and then create some sort of presentation to teach their peers about that topic. Um, independent work, so for early finishers or extension opportunities for extra credit, even you can use one of those additional courses for that, um, for that idea. And then open days. Now I know as teachers, you have very little free time, but there are always those days where you do need to plug something in and you don't want to show a movie. Um, so before a break, after testing, during an advisory period, um, or even on a guest teacher day, these are really great for students to just easily be able to access. All right, I see somebody said, can you see their answers and responses? Um, you can see their answers and responses. So I'll show you in just a second. I know I am pretty much at time here, but um, you do have a grade book feature in your dashboard. Um, where you can see uh, students' responses and their scores. Something I will share with Rebecca is this financial literacy alignment guide. So you're going to be able to see the different topics that you are being asked to cover um, with Senate Bill 1 and how our, our digital lessons and our offline lessons can fulfill those. So it's not necessarily a day-to-day -day curriculum guide, but it is going to give you an idea of, let's say you're on that informed consumer unit, what EverFi lessons can I use to fulfill those standards? All right, want to just quickly show you, again, I will share this with Rebecca and I'm here to support you in this as well. Um, to create an account, you will go to everfi.com slash create and you'll follow the steps to get set up. We do have an option to integrate with Clever or Classlink. I don't believe that your districts are there yet, but that's something that we can explore together. Um, and then you'll create your account. And I just wanna show you, this is an, a quick view of what your dashboard will look like. And then wanna specifically call out, being slow. This is that gradebook feature that I mentioned. So all of your students' names will be listed here. You'll be able to see for each lesson what they scored and then even click into those and um, see their different responses that they had. So I know that was really quick. Um, I will put in the chat my email address and then share all of this with Rebecca as well. Um, and I am here to support however I can um, with any questions that come up or even help you create classes or uh, dive into this even more with you all. So I appreciate your time and we'll just throw my information into the chat. So very timely. We need this for our students, supporting you, our teachers, to make your jobs easier, um, both from EverFi and the Cleveland Reserve Bank.
So thank you, ladies, both. My little bit is about um, some financial literacy eBooks coming straight from InfoHio. And InfoHio resources are grant funded. So these are free and available to all Ohio educators and students and even when they go home. And I'm gonna put into our chat this special link for everyone. This is a blog post that they put out and it will give you more details than I'm gonna have time for, but they're talking about supplementing with InfoHio's resources and specifically are there Gale books. What I'm gonna do is pop out here to InfoHio and they have put their website resources into strands. And in these strands, I am going to go to the grades nine to 12. And there's a lot more here to talk about, but I'm here just for the financial literacy eBooks from Gail. I will say this, if you click on the card itself, you'll be taken to the resource. If you click on the I or the more info, you'll be taken to other bits for that resource, meaning I might need the direct link. I might want handouts that would help me get through it. And uh, these could be flyers, bookmarks that you could give out to your kiddos and training materials. Keep in mind if you watch any of their training videos that it's going to be basically any resources from Gale and we from InfoHio have a portion of the resources. So take these training tutorials with a little grain of salt, just knowing that maybe your access is a little more limited than their general training. So I thought I'd point you out to their training. I had clicked on that more info button and on-demand training is listed because you can really figure this out on your own in 15 minutes. I'm not even going to have that much time to take you through it. So I thought I'd let you know about the training there. And when I back up, I am able to just click on the card for this resource. It takes me straight to it. If you are ever prompted through InfoHio's website for a login, keep in mind they use geolocation. So it already detected where I was from. If it says, or if you're prompted to log in, you can always find the password for your school district if you don't have geolocation turned on through your browser. So just let you know if you were gonna find a password, they simply ask for your school name uh, or your zip code and they'll figure it out and they'll tell you. And since this is being recorded, I am not um, opening this up because this is truly a resource only for Ohio schools and teachers. So when I go back into this, here it is. And what they have are other resources from Gale, but their financial literacy has 54 resources. And when I click on those, it's limiting just to those 54. And I can click, as you see, I've already visited, always broke. And you click on a cover, you have two view options. And I just want to quickly go over those. When you land on the ebook, it's going to take you to a table of contents. And this is the text view. And you can jump in. Text view, if I go ahead then to maybe why money matters, text view is going to have a lot of assistive technology features. And when I click on listen, then it's going to... Why money matters. It's going to play. I also have a gear to adjust and have text tracking and color, and I can enhance the speed of the reading. And that only happens though once I have clicked to listen and then I go to the gear. I can also change my font size, and they have added open dyslexic font as well. So that is new. And we can also make this as large as we need for our visual impairment and that was my last option there I was just decreasing it back that is text view 
You also have all these icons. You can send this article then, or this ebook chapter to your Google Drive. If you are a Microsoft OneDrive district or even email it. It does let you download and print in case you need to be offline or the student needs to have um, work with an aide or in another area where they're making up work and they don't have a computer. Also, there is the book view and you'll have less assistive technologies because we're basically looking at a picture, but this is the actual book. And then we can do a two page spread. I can zoom out a little bit so it fits. I use this in class. I can make it full screen and I can present this now very cleanly to my students and navigate through the book using the arrows off to the right. Then I could use my interactive television or interactive board to annotate over top. And we have other very important links such as citations which they provide all the choices that we would commonly see. And then I can export that out to my Google Drive. And I could also get a link. So this would be a permanent link back to this page if I needed them to start specifically on page nine. There is a highlights and notes feature. That only works if you're back in text view. Again, if the book view was only a picture, this instead, if I am reading as a student and I want to highlight, then I can use those tool, tools to add highlights and then generate my own special kind of like notes that I print out for later. Maybe it's a word that I don't understand. I can ask for a definition later. Maybe I've been asked to summarize, so then I could have all my highlights and then I can take those and they would be listed and then decide where am I going to put this. I have the choice then to take care of it, but there is a warning. Make sure you download or send your highlights and notes to yourself before you exit because they, they will be lost after you close your browser. So those are for in the moment. Really what I wanted to get across to you guys here about this resource is how to view text view and book view. And know that we have 54 eBooks from Gale through InfoHio. And you can navigate them from the InfoHio's main page in the grades nine through 12 area. I appreciate you spending this time with me and, and I hope you are walking away with at least one resource, either from the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, EverFi, or from InfoHio that you can truly use in your classroom. And if you can't use it, please share it with another teacher.